Hello, everybody. As always, thank you very much for being here today. It is really such a pleasure to be visiting Wilfred Grutens. You know, I first met Wilfred a number of years ago when he and Michael Behrens took the time to come to Toronto to visit me in the gallery. Um, after it was a great visit, and uh, after a while, Wilfred took out his images to show me, and at that point, Michael Behrens jumped in and said, just say yes, you don't even have to look at them, just say yes, you have to have this man's work. And that was definitely true. It has been the beginning of a great relationship and such a pleasure to have his work in the gallery. Um, every year uh, we do Art Toronto and um, Wilfred um, does, we take his work to Art Toronto every year and Wilfred and often his wife Steffi come to Toronto. This year it's a virtual tour, so I'm gonna miss, miss his visit. It's become a yearly chance to catch up and spend some time and have some great meals. So Wilfred's work is absolutely mesmerizing and uh, it's gonna be pretty exciting as he walks us through uh, some of his techniques. He started very, very young. Wilfred was 15 years old um, when he apprenticed as a glass painter and a restorer of stained glass windows. Life, though, took him in a different direction. It was maybe 10 years later when he opened his own studio in Cleve. I'm not going to tell you about that because that's an interesting story that he's, he's going to tell you about his life and how he got where he is today, and it's really fascinating. Um, we were supposed to be in the gallery today, but the internet didn't allow it. It was down, and Wilfred is experiencing that kind of issue where he is, um, so it wasn't reliable for him to take us live through his studio tours and show us certain things, so he's made some excellent videos, which we'll have a chance to, to see. Um, and we're going to do things a little bit differently today. If you have any questions while we're walking through um, the tour, if you have any questions, we're still going to do the Q&A at the end, but if you'd like to ask Wilfred anything in between, you're welcome to either tap the hand at the bottom of the screen or use the Q&A feature um, to write a question. So whatever you're most comfortable with, just have a great time and enjoy yourselves. So now it's a pleasure to say hello to Wilfred and to his wife, Steffi, both of you. So good to see you. Hello, a long, a long, hello everybody. And I, and I should say you're in your home and uh, the studio, your studio is on the same property. So we're gonna be moving between the comfort of your home and seeing the videos of the studio. Hello to everybody. As for me, it's an honor that you take your time to uh, have a look in our place and in my working space and in my studio. And uh, yeah. I also say hello to everybody. Yeah. My yeah. wife, Steffi, I have to introduce you. Sorry that I didn't yeah. do that. I do it myself. <laughs> Hi. So, you know, you and Steffi are world travelers. You're always traveling somewhere, going someplace. How has COVID affected you that you're pretty much, um, or I assume you're pretty much homebodies now, and you're not able to move around as much as you're accustomed to? Yeah, we are, actually, we have a, we have a doc for now four months. four months. And so we don't plan to travel anymore for a long uh, time. So we will getting, staying more at home and, mm -hmm. Maybe I come to Toronto, to the uh, Toronto or to the really? or whatever. But uh, no, we, we picked up the particular time, the dog, when the Corona virus um, came up. And so it is really, for us, it is uh, a pleasure to have the dog and to walk over the fields and making long walks and uh, we're feeling very comfortable at home and at work. And just Steffi, she is a teacher, as you may know, and 
for her, I feel very sorry that she has to go every day to school and now in, in the moment she has to wear this mask and uh, this is uh, horrible, it's a horrible thing. Yeah. So, but on the other side, we are really lucky at home and we'll see what's going on. I mean, we have also my, my youngest son, he said when we have to travel, I want to travel, he has to take care on our dog and so. Mm. Yeah, we'll what, kind, see. what kind of dog, Wilfred? What did you? What is? What kind of dog do you have? Oh, uh, <laughs> aren't you glad I asked? Yeah. <laughs> I um, have a terrier. Is that a terrier? Yeah, it's a terrier. Yeah, it's an it's added, added terrier, and you would see a very short uh, cut in the movie. You would see the dog. Uh, yeah. You know, I uh, we had a terrier once. I had um, an Airedale. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. Yes. Oh. which is a very uh, large dog. Yeah, it's uh, 50 centimeters, something like 55 centimeters, something yeah. like that. Yeah, we have a girl, it's yeah. not so big. <clears throat> yeah. So ah, the okay. boys are a little bit more. Mm -hmm. okay. But uh, we were thinking about 10 years to having a dog. Yeah. And last year, <laughs> we decided to yeah. first uh, make a big travel, a big, uh -huh. big journey, and after uh, we yeah. take our dog. <laughs> yeah. So COVID's done that. It's allowed people, I mean, there's a, obviously it's a terrible thing, but a lot of people have taken some time to think and maybe do things differently or at least contemplate doing things a little differently. So, you know, maybe now it might be nice if we just uh, take a moment and we'll go to the gallery. We couldn't be there today because there wasn't internet, but Daniel did a little film on some of your pieces in the gallery. And I could oh. just uh, show those for a minute. Mm. Mm. I'm thrilled. <clears throat> Yes. Well, yeah, those are beautiful pieces. You know, when I first started um, to represent you, you were doing just cubes, or primarily cubes. And now um, there's the egg form, um, there's the, well, we always call it the eye, the eyeball, yeah. there's yeah. the orbs. Tell me how those uh, different series developed. Um, um, I just want to 
I think the um, optimal the optimal uh, size is the, the cube because of the re reflections from from the backside and from the sides and from the top. But uh, with the with the egg form or with the ellipsoid, uh, there is you have the two lenses uh, on the right and on the left, and if you have a look through, then uh, or you go beside, then uh, all the um, the paintings are getting a sort of blowing. They they blow up. They they going. They're moving. They are changing the. It's a. I would say it's um, normally it's a real circle. And if you go beside, it's it's getting uh, like in like a, a kidney, something like that. It's just the form inside the ellipsoid is changing. It's something similar to to the to the cubes, but um, you don't have this reflections of that what is painted in from the top or from the back or from the sides. So it's something different. But I mean the 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 size of uh, of an ellipsoid. This is it's something something else. It's something more big, and it's a it's a real piece you can put somewhere on a sideboard. Or and uh, this this cubes, of course, you can also put on the sideboard. But it's also you can put them in a in a cubicle or somewhere. Yeah. So. I, I think both uh, both are have their own specific uh, yeah, yeah. Their, their own specific uh, the attractions. So <clears throat> I must admit the the egg that we have in the the gallery is an absolutely yeah. beautiful piece. So it from every angle, whether you look into it or look at it from the side or on an angle. I think the colors are so strong in that yeah. particular piece. Beautiful piece. Mm. Yeah. Thank Lovely. you. Oh, you're welcome. Mm. You know, as well, we have one of your paintings on the wall. And I saw it. Yes. Um, and I think that's from the first body of paintings or painting on glass that you did, if I'm not mistaken. And probably it's evolved over the last little while. How did that seem like a natural way to move forward to advance or how did that come that you went in that direction? I mean, you were always painting on glass. Yeah, I, I always paint and um, um, I thought to try something, something different. And I also directly had the idea that uh, I have to, to make it deep. And um, I tried to get it um, deep by using uh, several paint, paints of glass and painting uh, in, in sheets and glue them together and getting the same uh, work with the same color, with the same paint medium I do with the cubes and with, with the ellipsoids so that some parts of the painting is floating away during the gluing process and that makes some strokes some like feathers some little things inside the picture and getting them an additional deepness so and um, you will see uh, i have in my uh, presentation in my powerpoint uh, presentation i have the very new work of um, wall work and it is, uh, I would say, this more. It's something else. There is already a little change inside. Mm -hmm. so, so, should we you, should we go to the, that first video? That you, would you like to go to the first video that yeah. you're going oh, to sure. show? Yeah, we have yeah. to come to an end. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, Daniel. Okay. Ah, the dog. Ah. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Nice to see you in my home and on my working place as well. I sit here for hours and 
do my dots and um, my little lines on the glass and I can do it at home because the format of my sheets, glass sheets are like this and this is really handlebar in my home so I don't have square meters something like that so only little pieces and I do it as I do it piece for piece to getting uh, the form of a uh, cube uh, I just in the moment I have to do with a, with a size like this and so it's very comfortable for me to sit here um, I want to tell you a little bit about my inspiration which comes from uh, colors of calyx plants stones life forms from the sea such as selfish jellyfish and sea animal and create an inexhaustible inspirational source for me um, i have to tell you the illustrated book kunstform der natur art forms in nature by the german zoologist ernst hecker had an immense influence on the fantasy world of my youth and is once again reflected in my current work I decide on the shapes and colors that I paint onto the single paints with innumerable dots and lines during the start of the work process. At the same time, I have the three dimensional resulting shapes in my mind's eye. For me, um, that is going to be too, a little bit of meditation, I would say. And I hope that my artifacts I create in their own aesthetics give the viewer as much pleasure and fascination as I enjoy, thereby sparing any further questions. Just enjoy my work. Okay, thanks for listening.
that was incredibly fascinating. Hope I hope you believe. enjoyed it. Oh, very much. Very, <laughs> very much. You made it look so simple, though, which obviously it isn't, <laughs> with such ease. <laughs> Uh, really? how did how did that technique come to you how was that developed yeah. hmm. uh, this it was a actually it was a long way you know i um i tried different glues and I, I i was thinking about not to glue the single sheets but then you have always this dust in between and it is not so clear if you um make additional sheets then it's getting more dust, more dusty, more nebulous, and so I thought in the end I had to I had to glue it together to make a really a solid block and have uh, no problems with uh, uh, dust and everything. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the end, it is the best solution uh, for this kind of work. Um, but I had so many ups and downs in this. Um, and this development that um, in between I want to stop it and doing, do something else. But then uh, I just uh, went through and now I'm almost uh, satisfied with the things who are coming out, you know. But it is, I think you can ask each artist and, you know, as an artist, you see every mistake you made and you're just looking for mistakes. This is this is really this is really something. Mm -hmm. uh, you never would see it, and you would never think about it. But for us, it is always like this. Uh, you can make it better, you know. And um, yes, you have to be perfect. Yeah. Otherwise, it's yeah, you see everything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You can, but, would... Wilfred, we have a couple of questions from yeah. clients. Anthony yeah, sure. would like Welcome. to know. Are you using Hexol glue? Yes, of course. You are. I and try. You I try different uh, glues, um, UV glues, and uh, Araldite is another. Is a German one, but the best uh, Hexol is the best. It's really uh, the transparency and it's, it's the same breakable index, uh, light breaking index like glass. So, and it's not getting. Um, it's not getting yellow, turning into yellow, even after a long time. So, <clears throat> great. And then Anthony the would also, Anthony would also like to know what kind of paint you use. Uh, I use different um, oil-based um, paints and uh, acrylic paints, and then I I mix some things on it that. Um, I get the effect of uh, floating away, that the, the, the pigments, the color pigments floating away during the gluing process. And um, I take these pencils, I open them and mix my own color. But um, I was, when I start, I, um, I did it really with, uh, with, with strokes. But the problem there is the color is very soon drying in the stroke and then you have to interrupt your working process and getting making the color new and things and then at one time i said hey okay you take just the pencil the pencil um uh, open them and mixing the color put it in the pencil and getting also the the tips which you can buy in the supplier in the uh, artist supplying shops so um I made, I, I made also with this, I made a lot of experiments, but now I have I found for myself, I found a, I found a good solution. <clears throat> Great. But the color is in, in a word, in a moment, it's a very simple um, color that you can, or far pigments you can get, you can buy in the um, artist supplier shop. Great, thank you. Steve would like to know, when you use the glue on the sheets, how do you avoid trapping bubbles inside? Um, I, I have a, a vacuum, a vacuum as a, you will see it in my next, um, in my next little movie. 
I show you more about the uh, process of mixing the, the glue and uh, um, evacuate the, the bubbles out of the uh, I build I build from a from a pipe which you can buy in the, some uh, uh, building uh, house building supplier shops you can buy this orange pipes and I have a very simple one and have um, um, a piece of flexi on the floor and then put the pipe and then a piece of flexi in the top and then I made a little hole inside and then I get a vacuum miser on it and the bubbles five minutes after five minutes the bubbles is like boiling and then the rest I evacuate with a with an, a normal uh, industrial uh, fern industrial dryer. yeah dryer I right. used before in the movie you saw the, the yes and, and so, now we've we have a okay. few people asking towards the end of the video you you place the a cube onto a machine and it's shaking the cube and they want to know what does that achieve oh sorry i didn't get you uh, oh. when you put the cube on machine yeah. that yeah. shakes it what does yeah. that achieve? So <clears throat> this is a, a polishing machine. There is a felt inside you saw before. <clears throat> I uh, remove the felt and with a high pressure uh, water, water streamer, um, I cleaned it up and afterwards I, I cut a little bit of the felt. I cut a little bit felt off and then I put it in the machine and then I put the, the cube inside. This is, is a, the big a thick, um, a large felt mat um, sucked up with uh, seroxide and a little bit of water, and then I put it. I put the cube inside and leave it for one hour or something like that. And I have to uh, put some uh, material under the felt to get to reach the corners of the cube and. It's a little bit uh, doing the, the felt out, making something inside to get it higher on particular uh, places of the felt, put the felt back again and put the cube again and try have a look if it is working on the right place of the surface of the cube and have to do it several times. It needs maybe one, two days till um, the cube is finished in this. The, the good thing is I don't have to uh, hold these heavy cubes. They are, the weight is about 35 kilogram. And um, if you want to do it all by hand, it's really, it's very hard work. And so I enjoy this machine, it's just working. And I just have to see that the felt reaches all the complete surface of the, of the cube, of the side of the cube. I see. Before we go to the next video, I'll take one more question. And Lauren would like to know how the process differs when you're working with a circular piece as opposed to a flat cube. Um, this is, um, you have to uh, take an angle, uh, angle grinder. It's not, the machines are not as worthless. There's no, no way to do it in the machines. This is really hand work. But with, a, with an angle grinder and uh, I cut before, uh, before I start to, to grind and polish, uh, the, the glass is already cut it in the form uh, I, have in, I want to have in the end. So I have just little steps I have to grind away and uh, afterwards polishing that. This is, uh, real, this is also real hard work. And um, I have a, um, a friend in, in the Czech Republic and he's, um, he's helping me a lot with this because um, I may be too old for such a hard work. <laughs> <I'm> too old. <laughs> so are, are we going to go to that other video, Dan, with, yeah. um, about uh, Wilfred's, more about his career and about the pieces?
What yeah. we're going to do is we're going to jump to the studio tour right now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's great then. Okay. Through the other And studio. is that where we have the images of the available pieces as well, or is that a separate one? No, that is a separate, separate one. one. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. Thank you. Okay. okay. Here we go to Wilford's, back to Wilford's studio. Hi, everybody. Nice that you're following me to my second working place, and this is here. I'm doing the more bigger stuff here, like uh, uh, wall work and gluing my cubes together and my eggs together. And um, have a look, come in. Now it is uh, like usual. It is in artist places a little bit crowded and a little bit chaotic. But um, very often, out of the chaos, we find uh, and we explore a new thing. And so, I just want to give you a glimpse around. Yes, this, for example, is a new piece I made, and I don't want to clear it anymore, to polish it, it just, for me, it is um, the secret what is inside uh, two balls who are connected and depends on how you look on it, uh, the colors um, disappear in one point, like in my, in my usual cubes, I, just, I, I like to do it like this in a, in a very smooth surface, a very smooth surface and uh, it's something new. Here um, you see different materials I use for it and oh Jesus Christ, I have to help him, he's not hanging anymore. Uh, here. You find new pieces. I have to, to make some boxes for it, and till I finish the boxes, that will stay here, and I have a look every day on it, so I can see my own work that is very solemn. Except in, on exhibitions or fairs, or yeah, this is uh, the place where I. Uh, measure my glues together, my two component glues, and for simple things, is a vacuum, a self made vacuum box, and to heat the, the glue a little bit up with a microwave. And this one here, you find a second working place, is here yeah, I'm making my wall work. And this is, a, I make a construction of a turntable. It's very comfortable for me because I stay here. And if I need something, I just turn the table, take it off, and put it back, and take it up, or with pencils or colors, I can do it very comfortable. So I don't have to go around, I just stay here and do it. This is the first sheet. And after that one, I take a second sheet of glass on it and uh, a second layer of painting and then a third, a fourth, a fifth. These are almost made out of five uh, pieces of glass, five sheets of glass. So I take a, a, um, a color, brown color. This is, in this for example, is green. From the back side, and then I start painting in the front. And then taking another sheet on it and continuing my paintings. So there we go. Nice. You get an idea how I create this wall, wall pieces. So I put it on it, and then here start the next layer. 
and then the next, the next, the next. Afterwards, I glue it together uh, in the same manner like my cubes, but only, only five sheets. But these five sheets are much more big than the cube sheets. So that means I have to be very carefully not to get any bubbles inside. And uh, so, so when I glue these five sheets of a wall work together, I also have this cross. I lay on it five sheets, and then I have this little. Little pieces of the screw I put inside, and now I'm I'm able to bring uh, to bring pressure on the surface of the of the sheets, and that makes um, something with the color. The color floats sometimes away with the glue, and it makes I can show here very well. That makes some. Uh, shade lines, I would say. Like this one. You see this? All these stripes. This is during the gluing process, uh, the color is um, floating away. So that makes this effect of also of th uh, the third of dimension. This is a, a finished work, the last work I finished. This is also another one. And also here you can see how the colors escape in some parts. These stripes are here. Okay. I can uh, show you some other objects if you like. Here are also three new pieces, little ones. I just, as I told you, I have to make some boxes. Store it and as long they will stay here. And here's also a mask. Uh, I create one of my designs, very up to date. It remains a little bit on the on the virus itself, I think. Yeah, thank you for listening, and uh, I hope you will enjoy this little clip. So Wilfred, I hope you enjoyed it. Very, very, very nice. I, I noticed the um, paintings have become much more abstract and looser. Um, that's how they feel to me. Is that so? Do you yeah, I think so. About the work? Yeah. yeah. And I'm, I would say in the moment I'm really uh, make a lot of experiments mm -hmm. with this. You know what the colors does when I take more water or more oil and Mm -hmm. And the, the size is something really uh, gives me some. Uh, uh, um, it is something else if you uh, paint on a sheet of twenty by twenty, or if you play um, paint on a sheet of uh, eighty by eighty. You know the it's it, it's um, it's a shell it's a, a sort of challenge. Uh, you very often you make too much or uh, then you have the second sheet or I, I, I take the second sheet, the third sheet and then I see, oh, everything is done already. Um, going back and forth and removing all that what I've made the last hours and try it again. Mm -hmm. It is not uh, always like you do something and then it is the end, it's uh, the product of that what you try. Mm -hmm. It's very often that uh, you start new 
clean the sheet and start new mm -hmm. and clean. And it's, and, you know, if you see a, a finished work, then uh, the, the people who look at it, they say, okay, no, it is, it is nice made, but you never see how much work is behind it. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's for for every if you are sculptor it's the same the same thing you have to uh, you make a cut and then you see no this cut was too much and you so you make a, a more smaller object out of the of the material you make the form with or you start completely new this is um, i think it's a beautiful direction i love the direction it's it's mm -hmm. taking, the way it's evolving. I think it's really beautiful. What kind of paint do you use um, for the paintings? Is it the same paint? It's the same. The it's exact the same, same, paint? same paint, yeah. And I don't know if anyone asked you what kind of glass you use. Is there something special about the glass? It's the same glass, I take it. Uh, no, it's the same glass. It's mm -hmm. a, a colorless glass. It's a white, uh, opti, opti white glass. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, hmm. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. Dan, do you have some questions there from um, from people? Yes, I, yes, I do. Why don't you go ahead? John would like to know, Wilfred, do you draw the patterns before you apply the pigment to the glass or do you uh, start working and create as you go? Um, I make uh, the only thing I do I, I um, make a choice of the colors I mix the colors and then I know these colors I take I will take for the for the picture and then I, um, that's all and then I start it's actually it's a, the same uh, how I do the cubes I have the, with the cubes I have only uh, a construction of a um, of a sphere. That's all in, in lines, and then everything else uh, I decide when I start it. So, so it looked I, like it looked like the cubes. Those cubes that we saw, those were the small cubes, weren't they? Yeah. At the end, what size are those cubes? Um, they have uh, 14, 14, 14 mm -hmm. centimeter. Centimeters. Yeah, that means uh, six, uh, three. Uh, three, four inches, something like that. Mm -hmm. Is that right? No, five inches. Yeah, they, they look mm -hmm. beautiful as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. sorry to interrupt. Wilfred. Is there another question, Dan? And Yeah, Wilfred, we have a really nice comment from Charles from the Fort Wayne Museum of Art. Uh, yeah. He says that they acquired a piece last year and it's on yes. display now and it is hands down the favorite of the public. <laughs> yeah. So everyone yeah, loves think... that piece. Always. <laughs> no, no, children like the very much because there's something happened, you know, you go around and the, the, the painting is disappearing and this, that makes it very interesting for children. Yeah. I, I get uh, where my pieces in the museum, when they are shown, when they are on display, uh, I always get the information that when children come into the museum, they like my pieces best. So and I, is, uh, well, I can, I can attest to that. Yes. I have a four-year-old and we've been spending a lot of time at the gallery uh, during yeah. COVID and he walks in the door and he just runs towards your pieces and mm -hmm. he can stand there for around 15 minutes. It's the only mm -hmm. time I can really get some work done is when he's staring at your work and I can safely walk away from him. Yeah. yeah. Do, you, do you remember nice also at Art Toronto we had that little girl who had to yeah. be there for about an hour, she wouldn't leave your work. Yeah. And you were so kind to her. You kept talking to her about about the work and the yeah, you have to colors. The, yeah. you have to, uh, knowledge, knowledge, you say? Knowledge the knowledge. children. Yes. That they yeah. get, in, uh, get interest in art. So mm -hmm. maybe later they buy art and that is very important for us. Exactly. For all of us, I couldn't agree more. And that's really true about anyone that comes to the gallery or to an art fair. You have no idea who's going to be drawn to your work. Um, people who you think are only just wandering are the people who will fall in love with something. So it's about being respectful, I think, to everybody who's paying attention to any artist's work. 
Anyways, Dan, do you have another question? I yeah. Before we go to the PowerPoint yes. presentation, I have one more question, and uh, that comes from Louise. Louise is a big fan of your work, and I'm going to open up her microphone and allow her to ask you directly. Louise, all you want to do is click on mute. Can you hear me? Yes, we yes, can. I hear you. Okay, Hi. great. My husband, Norm, and I have been admiring your work for several years. As Sandra mentioned, we've loved it. And we finally jumped in and bought two pieces from the series where the shark bubbles, yeah, uh, no. shark yeah. bubbles blow. And our friend, I thought you might want to know that our friend named the Mahooty and the Blowfish. <laughs> if you want to, it's a musical <laughs> reference, right? But yeah. I just it yeah. really... It is. Um, Watching your techniques, how you do it is fascinating, and uh, we will watch your tapes several times, but I just wanted to thank you. It, it's added thank you. so much to our thank collection. Thank you, and have a, have a lot of fun and a lot of pleasure with your specific work. We do. We've put them on pedestals high yeah, up. Where... Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank yeah, you. They look beautiful. Mm -hmm. Really beautiful. You had a very good eye, Louise and Norman. It shows beautiful pieces. So I think that we do have now the um, a presentation about a little bit more about you, Wilfred, and your career. And uh, we'll get to know you a little bit better, um, where life has taken you. And then we also have, I think after that, we do have um, some images of your available work. Yeah. So here we go now. Ooh, 1969. Yes, I start very early. And you see, this is a, this is a, actually, this is a, um, from, this is a, um, a document or, um, how do you call it? An, an Urkunde. It's um, from the, from the Pope itself, you know, because uh -huh. um, the, the, Glass painting studio Hein Derricks was uh, <laughs> making the windows and the a certificate, like a in certificate, the, in the Sixteenish uh, chapel, in the in the chapel um, in Rome. Yeah, in Rome, in the Sixteenish chapel. The chapel and the um, in the the chapel. And, um, Vatican Museum. Yeah. in the so, Vatican Museum. So There's did you do chapter. restoration work there? Is that what happened? Uh, no, no, they um, didn't make a restoration. They make new, new ones. But new in ones? Uh, okay. 1900, something like that. So the, the studio exists 150 years almost. It's one of the oldest uh, glass studios on, in the world. Mm -hmm. And they make uh, not only the, this old stuff, they also make uh, very modern in Tokyo, the, the, I think that the train station in Tokyo, so uh, windows of Brian Clark and they make very modern things. So, but also a lot of uh, restoration work. And for me, it was very good. I, I had a lot of different works uh, to do there. So it was mostly, it was like this, that uh, I, an artist came with some, uh, some commissions there in the, in the studio and then um, uh, I got an, uh, as an, art, as an um, assistant to this artist and then I worked the whole uh, thing through with him. So mostly the, these artists, they are not uh, really know so much about glass paintings. So they were advised to doing it together with the, the employers. Of the, of the studio. And that was very interesting, I learned a lot. And this is a very old uh, glass painting I made uh, from Hieronymus Bosch. And I like him very much because uh, he's one of uh, my relations. <laughs> I, I discovered it, uh, one of my relations is um, historic. He, he studied historic and he, as an historical, he went in the, in the past and try to find out uh, who was member of the family. And my mother is a uh, born Van Aken 
And Hieronymus Bosch that was his artist's name. He was, uh, his real name was um, uh, Hieronymus van Aken. So it doesn't matter, but uh, I just want to tell you this. <laughs> this is the original. It's, um, yeah, this is Johann Tom Pricker. He's a revolution, he revol he's a revolutionary in uh, a revolution in glass painting because he made this window also I think about 19, yeah, 1910, I read it here. Uh, and he was making spectacular windows for that time, really abstract and uh, with, with patterns and uh, very free patterns like this. This is just a, a little, little piece of a big window. So can we go further? This is also an, an uh, it's called a uh, Swiss, a Swiss uh, window. And it's a weapon. Um, I made also a long time ago, but I just want to show it. These are the free, my free work. I did it at home, making at that time, sorry, surrealistic uh, paintings were very common on the people who work with, um, work with as a painter or. This is the 70s, huh? Yeah, 70s, the early 70s. Mm -hmm. This as well. And I was, uh, doing a lot of music in that time and uh, and also making glass paintings or working in, in ateliers from uh, artists and uh, working with them together uh, making commissions something like that to get the, to earn the money because with this yeah in the head. okay um in the 70s after i quit with uh, when he got a, as a freelan uh, freelancer in different studios, uh, I start my traveling period and my music period. Wow. And so I, um, I was always, I was working and then after I finished the work, I just went to where I want to go. And so came back, start working again and, and so far. I did it quite a long time. But always making music uh, in between. Um, I played. Uh, I played the trumpet. I, I learned piano at home, but my favorite instrument was the trumpet. But my parents they said, "No, you have to learn uh, piano, and afterwards you can learn any instrument you want." Mm -hmm. And they, I, I realized that they didn't like the sound of uh, brass. You know. Because if you uh, practicing brass instruments, it's sometimes very itchy in your ear. It's uh, especially if you are not really a good player. If you just start to play, then it is. So I had to learn a little bit piano, and uh, after when I start traveling, I decide I, I buy a, a little trumpet, a travel trumpet, and then uh, learn trumpet. I was also, you know, you saw the clips. Uh, I made the uh, music in the background. I was uh, playing this, uh, this uh, saxophone and this uh, trip hop music Sorry. in the back. Was that a good time for you when you were doing all that traveling and all your music? It, um, I think it was a, a very exciting time, but uh, the um, that was the main thing was to get, you know, to get to earn money. Mm -hmm. That means if you if you can imagine you you go somewhere and you are really excited by that what you visit, you come back and then uh, you have to start the, again. Where can I work? What can I do? Uh, where I get the money from? And this uh, I did for for ten years, and then I I, I was trying to to uh, get my income out of the music, but that was very difficult. It was very at that time it was very difficult because a lot of Americans, uh, when I was uh, in Munich, a lot of Americans came over because in in, um, in America only in the big cities they have uh, they had to the possibilities to play to perform, and that was a very well known musicians that came to Germany because they couldn't earn money in in the states because a lot of 
very well-trained musicians around. And the studios are full with uh, studio musicians and so. And um, in Germany, it was the same situation. So, uh, but the, the German musicians, they were really, um, they want to play with, with the American musicians, especially when they're, uh, when they had names, so it was for them very easy to to get an, uh, for example, a saxophonist or a pianist like Mel Waldron or something like that in the band that make the guarantee that uh, the show was sold out, something like that. But in the end, uh, it is if you have a hit, if you are able to make a hit and you are in the in the charts, then. It's completely different, but especially if you play jazz music or experimental music, then it is, uh, for me, I decided I stop, I quit music. And so I went to Hadamar and made my master degree there. And um, um, I, at that time, at that time, um, I, at that time, I uh, was with my I went with my family to Harama to make uh, to visit the school and make my master degree. And my my youngest son was born, and it was the the time where Chernobyl exploded, and it was three. Really, uh, I remember that this morning, I took him um, on the back of my bicycle, and I went somewhere in the green and uh, laying me, him in the grass. It was, uh, and I came back and I listened to the news and then they said, come on, close the doors. Don't use the uh, playing facilities for the children, not anymore. And uh, stay at home for a few days, at least for a few days. And uh, we have to measure how many um, poison is in the air and on the, on the ground and everything. That was really, that was a, a really a hard time. And uh, yeah, you can, yeah. This, uh, I want to show you where I got my money from. I had, um, for over three years, I had a restoration of these windows. Now you see the image, this is already restored. But I, uh, the next image is uh, the two faces. And you see before, here it was completely damaged in the, the faces are damaged and then the piece afterwards after I renewed it. Yeah. And also also the next one. Just to give you an impression. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this are uh, work I made during the time for churches, for a Rosetta in a church. I made different um, advices to them and then they made the choice of that what I would you see in the middle. It's not something special but this is a little chapel. I created the, the windows. Uh, you can do it in the next. Yeah, I, I went from Harama where I made my master degree. I, a friend of mine, he was working also in this uh, old chocolate factory. And he told me, uh, there's a big hall, it's free, a big working space, and you just have to go there. It's very cheap. And you come back to Cleve and uh, all your old friends are here. And what you're doing in Harama, you are a master now. And so I went to Cleve. And um, the picture on the right side is already when I left it. And when I moved to into my new atelier, so it is empty. But um, I was working there for 25 years, something like that, I think. Yeah. These are old uh, photos from... Uh, my wife said I look like James Dean on the left side. I was, at that time, I was still smoking, yeah? <laughs> but I, uh, I quit a long time ago. And these are the, the first uh, work I did in, when I came to Cleve. I just uh, cut glass and put it together and making uh, things like this. Cutting and assembling. And, and in, uh, I was, you know, I, I was uh, used to work with glass and I was also 
always fascinated by autonomous glass panels. So I made all the time I made um, these glass panels. And I like them today as well. This one is an, a special glass. I like, I love this work. It's also, I think, 20 years old, something like that. And this is made of single sheets, single little pieces of glass. They are hang up and they, they move. So if you have a, a little wind in your room or some vibrations, then the whole uh, picture will uh, start to move and that makes the, the, the whole thing is uh, getting in, in movement and that makes something special. I love this. It's a lot of work. It's a very complicated etching technique I, I did on a, um, on a special glass. It was a very thin blue coat and a, big, a bigger white coat. And so with this etching, I put it away. This, way, this is also an etching technique. I did. There was in a house, there was a really straight, with straight lines and there was no curve and nothing inside. And I saw uh, there were three windows and I thought, okay, I'm, 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 uh, I'm, I'm going out of the right angle and doing something uh, free inside the windows. And the man who commissioned me, he was really satisfied. He said, yes, okay, this is, these are my pictures. Now, uh, I'm, I'm, I went to other materials in connection with glass, with wood, and you can make the next a stone and lead, wood stone, stone and lead. I did quite a lot of pieces. So everything without color. This is a, these are variable installations. And there was, uh, I made it first in Glasserike Tubergen in Netherlands. I was invited there and um, I made this installation in a wood in, uh, in, a, in the middle of town. There was a, a wood and uh, somebody came, came up and said, hey, what are you doing there with this old glass? You put it in the forest. And then I told him uh, of the poetry of this piece because it is uh, heaven on earth. And it was really in the forest, you see it with the leaves on it and the sun comes through, uh, through the trees and it gives you a glimpse of the sky above. And so it, I like this piece very much. And I, I told and explained it to him. And then the exhibition was uh, for three days. And um, in these three days, he was really watching this. He was taking care on it because that no dogs going over it and that no uh, people, that, just walking over it and things like it was like a watchman for me. Other people told me, I said, "Yeah, you had a, you brought a watchman." And then I remember it was that one who said, "Hey, I call the police when you bring your dirt in our forest." So it was really funny. And this is in Ebeltorf. I was invited to an exhibition called, uh, in Denmark. Yeah, it was called uh, Ornament. I was very honored by this invasion. These are also uh, variable installations, pyramids you can uh, put together as you like. And these are the castings I made for, for a short while. This I made with, uh, with the help from Michael Behrens. He said, come on, I have so big kilns, maybe you put something inside. I, uh, Sometimes I have some place and then uh, I create this, uh, this uh, vessels or yeah, plates. And this one is also, it's a funny story. Uh, it's a, a mid, it's a, made with a closed form. So not an, an open form, an open mold. It's a closed mold with a reservoir in the top. And you see these two bubbles in the top, like pearls, sticking on the on the on the stone. And um, there was a di discussion: um, is the piece now ruined, or is it? And I thought it was a, like a present for me to have these pearls inside. You know, it isn't a, actually; it is an accident. It should be filled up, but 
uh, I can live with this. Very, very good. This is it in London. Oh. Uh, this this piece we just saw is in London, in London, and uh, we we brought it to to the in a circle. Yeah, yeah we brought it to, to the woman who who bought who bought it. Bought, bought it. it yeah. Yeah. And we go by taxi there, and the, we had a big box, and the taxi driver said to us, "So." Where we bring this bomb? <laughs> I didn't know what because it was an inner circle where all the, the government yeah. and so, so he was a little bit afraid what we have in the in the in the crate. <laughs> 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 now this a new work starts. Um, these are little uh, showcases from glass, uh, and uh, I filled them up with little pieces of glass. So on the, on the left side, I painted on a big piece of glass. I made a, a design, I would say, and then cut uh, small stripes out of it. Slices. slices small slices and uh, put them inside to give, him, uh, give another view on it. And here you have already the same effect then with my cubes. If you see the, on the right, the, the both images uh, showing one the direct and one from the side. So the the clear fields in the middle of the of the piece uh, is going to close if you go beside, and the the closed thing in the middle is starting to open. So you have uh, two two sides two sides of um, in the same piece. And here you can see it's the same. It's also the same piece. So, uh, one time from seen from the front and one a little bit beside. It's called waves. And this is also the same. You see that uh, there's and this also, just as an example. And now we have the uh, cut, paint, glue, polished work, the cubes, the new ones. And these are available. You see on the right side, you see the S2 as one. It was before. And those are the, the number. So these are pieces that you've recently yeah. made. Is that it? Yeah. I love the, the first one that we have on yeah. Our, yeah. our invitation. Yes. Yeah, this one is, uh, I like it also mm -hmm. very much. So if uh, somebody is interested, uh, <laughs> you just uh, remember the S2, S3, S4, oh. S5. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, this is... That's, that, oh, isn't that interesting? This is, a this is a pyramid and there is also a little story. I was, um, my a friend of mine, he, he visited me with his son and the son said, oh, can you make it very small one and I bring you some flies and you put the flies inside. A child, a child. A child, his child. And then, um, um, he brought me six, seven, eight, nine flies. They are already dried on a piece of styropor. And then I had it on my working table and um, I put, with my glue, I put some inside, you know, like, like a, 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 how you call it, uh, a, a amber. You know, in amber you find flies and uh, mitches and things like that. And he wants to have something like that. But in the end, I polished the piece and then I had a look inside and what I found was a leg from a fly. So <laughs> in this, I have to tell you, in this piece is a little leg of, and if you look and you see it, you say, yes, it is a leg of a fly. You know, it was the, the, the down part and the up part, you know, <laughs> and it was really, it was, I, I, yeah, no, I, I, I never will do somebody a favor, you know. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. Beautiful. I like uh, to make this, um, uh, make it enlarge it so you can see how the, how the color, the details, how the color floats and everything. Very nice. The purples are beautiful. Yeah. We just sold a beautiful purple piece of yours. Whoops. Yeah, I saw. Yes. This is a lovely piece as well. Yeah, this is also with a landscape uh, beneath. The only thing is uh, with this landscape, you the other cubes you can turn around as you want, you know. 
you can make it like this, like this, like this. But this one, you can only um, display with the bottom down, with the landscape down. This piece I like also very. Steffi likes it very much. She wants, very windblown. She wants to keep it. <laughs> it looks like it's a tornado going through. Mm, yeah. Beautiful. Whoops. Can, can we see that other one again, Dan? I'm sorry. Yes, thank you. There are, uh, there are two little spheres in the big, in the big pointed uh, sphere. Mm -hmm. You can't see it really, but in the back side you see there is a green, uh, a green color. There's a green and an orange one. Mm -hmm. they, are, they fill the, the pointed sphere, they fill it uh, perfectly. Okay. Thanks, Dan. Mm. Beautiful. Mm. This is the, the, the new one. Yeah. Yeah, they are all new. They are all from. Uh, I meant the new um, with where the surface. It was, on, it was on the table in the in the in the movie clip. Yes. Mm. So this is a new shape for you. Yeah. I made some experiments with uh, the, um, coloring the, the glue. So I put always a little bit uh, blue color, more blue color, more blue color. So in the, in the top it is blue. But it's on this photography I see now it is not really to see. So in, in real, it is more blue in the top than it is on the photography. Yeah, the photographies are lying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Nice direction, though. This is a special, um, special uh, ellipsoid because there is ne nearly nothing. It's a very clear, only the lines of a second-sized uh, um, is inside. A second-sized uh, ellipsoid is inside. So is that actually sandblasted through the side? Of yeah. The piece? Yeah. Okay. You have uh, on both sides. You have a sandblast, uh, uh -huh. sandblasted. Uh, so that's something very new. A sandblasting is going inside, and if you if you turn it, you see that the sandblasting. Uh, you, you can see it. Mm -hmm. uh, this is green interference. Very nice. Yeah, mm -hmm. and you see if you look under on the top. Uh, on the top of the of the green one, you see how it bent. It bends the circle. You know, it, the circle comes to you. It comes oh, to I the, see. yeah. Beautiful piece. Mm -hmm. So is this piece. This one is also uh, sandblasted, and also the form what's going through the red thing is uh, getting bigger in the end. Not in in real, but the the, the lens the of the of the cutter of the polished glass makes it uh, going up. Very dramatic. Yeah. This is a, a little one. Mm -hmm. I think you have the brother or the sister, whatever the you sister. want of it. In church. Green, huh? yeah. Green. yeah. This is the Maybe. one we call the eye, we call that the eyeball, but I yeah. hope you don't mind yeah. that. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. Okay. And these are also a new shape. It's a, um, a, hem a hemisphere. A hemisphere with a, um, uh, with a little um, concave, concave grinding inside. Mm -hmm. I have one with a convex and one with a concave inside. But um, it, is, um, it is an, a sort of illusion. If you look on it, you, you get the idea that it is not concave, it is convex. And uh, you also think you can get the little green, uh, the green ball out of it, but uh, it's not possible, huh? it's inside, yeah. These are, uh, now we are coming to the wall works I made the, for the last eight months, something like that. And so you see this experiment, I made a, um, a turning thing on my roof and I put the pencils inside and working with the cows. 
you know, getting uh, the, on my turntable you saw in the movie. I turned the turntable and in the top this um, uh, piece of metal was on the end. There is a little piece of rope and down on the rope there is a pencil and this pencil is uh, making chaotic waves on the glass. And so this comes out and I like it very much. I did also a bigger one of this, but it's yeah. not with these images. It's also a very nice painting. Yeah. Uh, what? Oh, very nice. It's a, very, it's a pity that you can't, uh, with the photography, you can't see how deep it is in real. This, this is it's very difficult uh, to make a photo out of it. You have to, to come this, but... Oh, mm. it's a uh, blue composition. Mm -hmm. I like the one that was just before that as well. Oh, there, that's very mm. nice as well. Yeah, very abstract. This is a, this is a, a butterfly uh -huh. kit. A butterfly you're, kit. You're right. That other one that you like so much is very simple. Very simplistic. It's a beautiful yeah. design. Yes. But if you go uh, on the detail, if you see the details, you can get lost in it. You know. Mm -hmm. yeah, for, for example, the red is lying deeper than the blue. So, mm -hmm. and uh, for that reason, that it's getting dark around you, you just go. You can go in the mm -hmm. uh, into the picture. It's a little bit psychedelic, also as well. I like that one. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Yeah, that's the last one. Oh, that's it. Yeah. You know, a wonderful new body of work. I know when I saw it the other day, yeah. there's just some remarkable yeah. pieces. Really, Thank Wilfred, you. the direction that you're going is, I mean, the work was beautiful before and so intriguing but it's it's becoming even more so congratulations yeah thank you so, so now for sure i, I want to thank you very very much but i'm going to see if there are some other people that would like to ask you some questions yeah. now okay but thank you and steffi thank you as mm -hmm. well both yeah. of you okay so daniel i'm going to um let you uh see if there's any questions to be asked of wilfred Fantastic. Thank you very much, Wilfred. We have a number of questions for you. So I'm yeah, going to start with Lauren. Yeah, I'm going to start with Lauren. Lauren would like to know, she says, light really makes the final product, uh, product come to life. Do you use light when you're creating or do they sit flat on the table? Um, uh, flat, flat, that would be for the paintings. Flat on the table, but I, I have a um, you saw it. I have a turn uh, turn facilities. I like it very much to have these turn facilities because uh, you don't have to do everything by hand. You know, you just uh, you put a pencil or a, um, um, you put it just on the glass and turn the table, and then you get the line. You know, and also with the big turn table, it's the same. Um, I can stay in one place and put the pencil or whatever I take on the glass and to just turn the table. And then um, it, is, um, it makes it much more easier. So, yeah. Thank you. And Arlene would like to know, have you ever considered not framing the wall pieces just to get that kind of that side perspective between the sheets? Uh, again, uh, so, uh, uh, um, this, this is very difficult um, because when I don't use the frame, I was thinking about this, then I have to grind, I have to grind it all around and then I have to, uh, and there is no security for the picture. So that means because I have to, to make transports with it and everything. And um, I know this shouldn't be um, an issue 
to think about when you when you create something uh, to getting uh, the idea of transport but um, you know it is glass it is heavy it also is about 35 40 40 kilogram and then i found i tried to find a, a solution for for this problem and i got this very thin is a three millimeter stainless steel frame who protect the, the the picture so i'm not afraid to send it to somewhere and in the end um it is i like it very much before i had the three centimeter um frame but that i didn't like so much and so i now i glue the picture uh inside uh, the very small stainless steel frame but in 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 germany in germany i wouldn't uh, I maybe maybe for my for my own home i would uh, leave the stainless steel frame but um for to send it and to handle it no, i i wouldn't uh, Recom uh, I wouldn't uh, recommend uh, just taking the glass. Right, makes, thank you. It, it makes it very sure, uh, very secure, the, the picture. And it is not, uh, it is not uh, this, um, um, disturbing in the end. If it is hanging on the wall, I have uh, one hanging in, in the atelier now, and it is not disturbing at all. It's just, uh, yeah. Right. Susan would like to know, do you work uh, by yourself or do you have assistants? I have an assistant who is cleaning the sheets. Because this is, it has to be done very carefully and very, very good. And, and uh, it needs a lot of time. It, it takes a lot of time. Uh, to clean, to clean them, to clean them perfectly. Because if you just miss one corner, something like that, uh, when I go uh, on the on the grinding machine with it, then and water comes in, then this uh, this finished. The work is finished almost. So damaged. Damaged. Yeah. Yeah. So I be very. Uh, take care on it that it is well made and a friend of mine is doing it he's a singer and he's when i when i come uh, in my working place in my studio then i hear from far i hear he's singing and cleaning the sheets and so it makes me happy it makes him happy everything fine <laughs> and i can do uh, painting and at the same time and he's not doing it eight hours a day. He's, he's coming when he wants and he comes in and doing it for two hours. And then he said, okay, I'm fed up. I'm going somewhere else. So it's okay. Anthony would like to know, did you invent the complete process you use or did it exist before? And how has your process evolved over time? Mm, I think it didn't got you so the process the way you make your pieces did yeah. you invent did you invent the technique or did it yes. exist before i i went i went to technique um but uh, uh john coon and uh Tolan sand and some other people they do it in the in the same manner but not with sheets they do it with uh they do it with little blocks so most of the time they don't have so much um, pieces in the same manner and glue it. So like, you can say this way you, you yeah. have this way. Yeah, for me. And also before I, I didn't, when I start, um, you know, they, they don't give informations. No, I can't say it like they give uh, with stone and sand. I have some contact and uh, we change informations and experience we made. Uh, but uh, when I start, uh, I didn't want to ask somebody. I asked a German uh, Gerd Kruft. He's doing the same work like or nearly the same work like uh, John Kuhn in Germany, but he died already. And I asked him and I said, hey, come on, 
I uh, I tried over 20 years. I tried to to develop this technique, and then you come and ask me, and then you make it in in half a year or something like that. Just try it by your own. Yeah, but uh, I think I say I I share. I share everything uh, I experienced. So I think it's better uh, to share it also to young people than uh, maybe they make something completely other stuff with uh, the thing they can learn from me. So. I, I, can, I can tell you that John Kuhn speaks very highly of your work. I was speaking to him last week and he <laughs> said that he's a huge admirer of you and of, mm. of your work. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I'm proud. Um, Suzanne would like to know a little bit about the process of making an egg. Uh, this, um, actually I, I do, um, I cut it in the, in the form, who it will be in the end, but with the steps, you know, when I, then I grew, I grew it half, together so I have a half egg and then I, I glue the second egg after painting of course and then um, I glue these two half pieces together so mostly you have in the middle you have um, you see this if you look very exactly to to uh, to um, to an ellipsoid you see in the middle you have um, it's a little bit bigger than the other connections and then it's getting um, a little bit complicated because of the weight. It, then this one is more than 60 kilograms, 65 kilograms, something like that. So uh, the handling is something, something else. Uh, I have to, to because I, I do it by, my, by myself, I've, I'm, of course I, I'm working with, uh, with wheels under my, my table, so I, I uh, put two tables together, I roll them together and then I put it from one table to the other to a not as high one so direct in the in the crate. So it's a little bit tricky but uh, till now everything was fine. I never uh, got something on my feet or on the floor or something like that. You have to be careful, you know, especially if I work with um, with uh, tools like uh, uh, this rubber thing, this you know where you, where you make a vacuum and then you can uh, push it up, and that is very uh, you have to be always very carefully that the faces are clean and uh, that, that that they know uh, go away and uh, a cube fall down or something like that. It's right. And we have a question. Ellen is, would like to ask you a question personally. So Ellen, if you, un, if you unmute yourself, you can ask Wilfred directly. Hi, Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, um, I was wondering when you started painting on the glass, you're now painting it in five layers of glass. Did you ever start with one and then decide you would add another? You know, did you did you do did you progress to yeah. five or? I, I get our get orient there? I get the orientation on the first one and then with the third on the first and the second and with the fourth on the first the second and the third. So I I really um, I don't know what what is coming out. So that was your question, huh? No, it was more a question of when you first started painting on glass, yeah. were you painting on just one piece yeah. of glass and that was yeah. the finished product? Or yeah. did you, and exactly. then you yeah. said, I'm going to try this. And then you tried it with two layers and yeah. you, at, eventually you got to five and you said, it's enough layers. Yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. not doing it anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you it's... paint, and, and the difference is that as you paint on each layer, it, a, a different layer it changes everything because a is on top of b but the light is in between them and then c is on top of b and a but the light is in between them yeah uh, exactly also i 
uh, when I when I do the second one, I, I cover some of the paintings from the first, and uh, with the, with the third and the fourth as well. So um, I always, you know, it's a very different with the wall work and with the with the cubes and uh, the plastic work, because. Um, with with the, with the cubes and the three dimensional work where the light uh, can come through, um, the 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 paintings working with uh, with the light and with with the wall work, you have to have the light from the front or from the top somewhere, and it is reflecting reflecting from the background of the last sheet of, of the first sheet. You know, the first sheet I cover completely with a, with a ground color. And this color is uh, um, important for all, for the whole composition, I would say. So it's like when you, pay, when you um, paint with oil on canvas. You, you don't make it, you don't take the white canvas, you give the canvas a, a little green or a little blue depends on if the picture uh, is going to be warmer or colder or so these things you have to to, uh, to uh, think about before you start and um, that makes a big difference um, so nothing shows through the wall doesn't show through no 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 I, I covered it up from the back side I, I have a I make a, a plate or a styrofoam, something like what is not so heavy because the picture is itself heavy enough, uh, just to protect the the first layer from the backside. So it's not the light is not coming through. The light for, from the wall work um, is reflecting the color pigments from the from the front. So like like in normal uh, oil painting. Um, it is nearly the same like an oil painting. The only difference is it is more deep because uh, it has the one and a half centimeter is, is the, uh, the connected uh, sheets of glass. So yeah, it's magnificent. Yeah. Thank you. And, and I, I have to say the only problem that I have with your work is every time I saw a new picture I would say, oh, that's my favorite. And then yeah, I'd see the yeah. next picture. I know I'd say, that. oh, that's my favorite. Your yeah. work is all so magnificent. Thank you. Thank you. I can't wait to see it in real life because yeah. it's so alive even in the photos. And yeah. I'm sure it's much more alive in real life. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're welcome. <clears throat> Thank you, Ellen. So, Wilfred, we have a question from a friend of ours, Peter Bremers. Oh. oh. Hi, Peter. <laughs> and Peter says, I have a feeling that your new wall work, your new wall pieces are more liberal, more free and abstract. Would yeah. you agree? Yeah, I agree. It's, some, it's, some, it's, something, it's something else. It's, uh, it's not so, uh, it's more free, more abstract and uh, intuitive. Yeah, it is. And uh, I'm really, I will be so surprised what's coming out because I'm in the moment, uh, uh, I'm working still on wall work, but I have also a cube and what, I, what I'm working on, I always work on different uh, pieces at the same time. And um, so I'm always, um, sometimes I come home and say, yeah, I've made something I'm not satisfied. And then I come back in my working place and my workshop and then I say, wow, this is great. I have to continue, I have to continue on it. So it's also always uh, depends on, on your mood, in which mood you are or so sometimes I have not. I have to go to do some something else, and then I try to make just. A, I make a little brush stroke or something like that, and ruin the whole the whole sheet. You know, yes, yeah, like like this. Hmm. Anthony would uh, like to know. He says that he sees how you draw inspiration from bo botany in marine marine biology. 
How about yeah. astronomy, uh, images from the Hubble telescope? Both, both. I'm uh, fascinated in, in uh, you know, this uh, Erich Heckel. When I got this book uh, from an uncle of mine, and he said, hey, uh, look at this, how plants are uh, inside, how the structure of the plants are. And so he was uh, appraised. Uh, and he, he was trying to, to give me some, some input. And um, I, I got this book and I said, wow, what is this, you know? And there's some, some other, I don't know, I think it's an English guy and he did a, a book like this with animals, with uh, insects. Oh, this is also fantastic because uh, if you, he, he was painting little, uh, little insects, uh, blowing them up, making them one side of the book is one, one and it, so detailed and so beautiful. So, and uh, I'm, I was really interested. And also I had an, I got a microscope from this uh, particular uncle. Uh, and for me it was, uh, I don't know if there was something what I not um, get under my microscope. I tried and <laughs> looked to nearly everything, you know. Uh, and this, I think this uh, influenced um, my work today. Okay. Uh, Great, and now Jonathan asks, how do you polish such clear optical on your carved surfaces? Uh, what type of sandpaper grit do you use before the cerium oxid <laughs> oxidize? Mm. It's a secret. Uh, it's not a secret. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, no. I, I start, um, when I, in the beginning I start with 120 grit, something like that. And um, then during the time, I recognized that it, I can start with 240. And then I go to 600, and then I go already to the polishing machine. And then with a, I mean, with a 240 grid, it needs maybe, instead of three hours, it needs five hours, something like that, but it doesn't matter. So I don't have to clean the whole, um, the whole working space. You know, if you change the grid, you have to make everything clean. Not only one piece of material should inside should be left inside uh, the uh, grinding facilities. So, and that, that makes uh, really work. So, I thought, okay, try to start with two hundred forty, and it's it is really working. Um, so it, it makes. Uh, it um, saves a lot of time, so so I mean, only make three steps, uh, two steps, and then polishing. And our last question comes from Jerome. Jerome would like to know. He says your work is very symmetrical. Do you see moving away from that in the future? Um, no. no, no. I think yeah. uh, I will, I can do everything at the same time. Mm -hmm. So depends on on the mood I'm in. You know, you also you listen to very uh, sad music and to very it's like this and to enthusiastic music and you know the same with the colors. You always. Uh, when I think about the colors I, I use, I, I try to to get the colors together and uh, make some little experiments. And I say, okay, I, I have a choice of this color and of this color. Three days later, I change. I have a choice of completely other colors. So it's always um, how you feel in this moment. And so Wilfred. Yeah. Thank you so much. You've yeah. been so generous with You're your welcome. time. And How many hours we talk now? Oh, we've been here for two days. No, thank <laughs> you. <laughs> it was great. Thank you yeah. very, very much. You were yeah. a much appreciated artist and guest, and uh, you shared a lot with us. And we love seeing 
the new work, your studio. Yeah. Even for me, knowing so much more about you will is helpful to me. I really appreciate it. Thank so, you very much for patience and uh, watching. Well, I think everyone really enjoyed themselves very, very much. Oh, so. We've been on for, for some time, which proves it. And I guess I say goodbye to you until we meet again, until okay. that's possible. And I hope it won't be too Hopefully far. Hopefully soon. Into... Pardon? Hopefully soon. I hope so. In the yeah. meantime, stay well. Yeah, you do. Good, good health and, and a good time. Keep being creative. Yes. For all of us. Thank you. Okay. Goodbye. Thank goodbye. You. Bye, Steffi. Goodbye, goodbye to you as well. Bye. Yeah, goodbye. Okay. Thank you so much.